G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna to continue work on the army trailer so we can get out and get camping. Let's go. All right, so we are back and today we are working on the ex-army trailer that I'm turning into a camper. If you guys missed the last episode, we actually made a new axle for it, so we widened it quite a fair bit. Played around with the leaf pack, did a new center bolt, new U-bolt, and I also swapped the hubs over to make it a six by one three nine stud pattern, which is the same as the Patrol. So, so yeah, I widened the axle, and now it is the exact same wheel track as the Patrol. So tracking up the beach or anything shouldn't be an issue now with this trailer. So with how wide we actually made it, we have a fair chunk of tire poke. I'd say that's about three quarters of the tire is actually showing. So coppers don't like that stuff, so we better sort that out today. Now up until recently, I actually didn't really have too much of a plan with this, but I've been speaking to a couple of people and there's one guy on Instagram that has the exact same trailer. And what he's done is actually cut the front half off and he's fabricated a box to just sit in there to house his fridge and all that. And it actually looks really good. So I am gonna steal a couple of ideas off some of you guys. So thanks heaps for messaging me. And we're also just gonna add just some random stuff that I think is gonna be cool. So now I have three quarters of a plan in my head of what I actually wanna do to this trailer. So let me explain. One of the first things we'll do is knock these guards off and just put an off the shelf style guard. I've actually got them sitting over there and cover these wheels up so the coppers love us. The second thing is I bought this powder coated black toolbox. It has a door on each side and also a lid on top. So that toolbox is gonna to be mounted here. And you're probably wondering how the friggin' hell am I gonna do that? And the answer is I'm gonna cut a whole quarter off the front of this trailer and mount the box in this general area. So we have a door here, a door on top, and a door on the other side for storage. Now, obviously I could go and put it way out here and it would probably sit somewhere around about here. Only having a short drawbar, if I did want to back into a tight area, I would be hitting that toolbox. So I ain't about that. Now under the cover, if you guys remember, there has been a fair bit of rust in here at some point. You can see all the dimples and someone's already patched a massive hole here. So that's why I'm not too phased about losing this front half. So that alone has sealed the deal that this front half is actually gonna go. Now the easiest way for me to do this is to actually chop it off flush with the mud guards. I also then chop down these corners and we just move this wall back to here, re-weld it on. It's actually not that bad of a job. It's definitely gonna suck because there's a lot of grinding, a lot of welding, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. So our toolbox will go there. Now for a rooftop camper, we are probably just gonna get a King's fold out one. I did look at the quickies and I actually laid them on it and I, and I hated it to be honest. My plan for that so far is to basically make a hard lid for what's left of the trailer and possibly have it on a hinge system. Now I'm gonna get that hard lid made out of aluminium and I can't weld aluminium, I don't have the equipment. It should be still pretty cheap to get that done and for weight reasons I think it's going to be much better being alloy and obviously alloy doesn't rust so that's good too. Now for the back here these lights are going to have to come off and go down the bottom here. I don't know if I'm going to keep this into a hitch thing yet. I don't think I really need it and I, it's probably just going to get in the way. Now this rear tailgate doesn't actually open yet so I will be cutting that out and putting a hinge system in so we can actually have that swing out. Now inside of there will probably be the fridge um, and a set of drawers and some more storage. We also want to have hot water and water tank on board as well. I think this is going to be a bit of a beast of a camper. I'm honestly so excited to get this on the road. Tying all that off will probably be a fresh coat of Raptor paint. I'm tossing up whether to color match coal or to actually just paint it black. So no matter what car I buy in the future, it's always going to look good getting towed behind it. So for today, I'm hoping I can at least get this front cut uh, removed from the trailer. I can get the mud guards off. It's a lot of work ahead, but I am very excited to get this on the road and just be able to just hitch on, take off, go camping, enjoy life. We just have a bit of a base camp. We can leave this at the camp. We can drive the patrol to wherever we want, come back and our camp is still set up. Now on the other side here, I did actually manage to already cut the mud guard off and I did start mocking this mud guard up. Now they are just off the shelf cheapies from a trailer shop. I think they cost me about 150 bucks. So nothing special about these bad boys, but this line here will probably just get welded along here and then I might even have to bring some brace tubing out to weld to the back of that just to stiffen it up 
and then I will be docking off as much as possible to give us the ground clearance that we probably won't ever need, but it'll be there anyway. So yeah, sorry for the rambling, but there is lots of things that needed to be explained. Now I'm gonna start by chopping off this other side and then probably start cutting into the front of it. Wish me luck, cause it is 35 degrees today, it's bloody hot, and I've chosen a grinding and welding job to spend the hottest day of the year. So yeah, I'll uh, cut this side off and we'll take a look at then probably cutting the front off, mocking up the guards and making it look sick. Mud guard is off. Now you can see the rust that was hiding behind this one. Also starting to push through there. Now it's not too much of a concern. This side is kind of a little bit more annoying because when I have my mud guard on, you'll probably still see that. This side here is just about getting completely cut off. So I don't really give a shit about that side. Now what I'm gonna do next is actually start cutting this front half off. I just wanna get rid of it. But I first have to cut the front off so I can move the front to here. Now in order to take this front half off, I do need to unbolt it from the chassis itself. So I'm gonna quickly go through and unbolt them now. Holy crap, that was a mission, but I finally got the front cut off. It was kind of annoying because the grinding disc didn't really fit into the corners properly. She is looking pretty weird at the moment, actually. At least I managed to keep a nice edge, so this piece now will be easy to weld onto this bit here. That is actually surprisingly pretty heavy, so they've used some pretty thick steel. Now you can see what I was talking about with the rusted plate there and also there was a fair chunk of rust at some point just here. Not risking it with that sort of stuff, I'd rather just cut it off, and this would sort of be wasted space anyway, so I may as well have a toolbox there with some doors for some storage. I'm pretty excited about this little setup. I think it's gonna be bloody good. So as much as I don't wanna do the next step because it means cutting the rest of this half off, most important thing is that I get a straight edge and mark my line from corner to corner so I can do a dead straight cut. More grinding, more cutting. Fun times on a 35 degree bloody day. This is what we live for. This Azito grinder is red hot too. Absolutely red hot. So I'm gonna grab a straight edge and start cutting into this. Then we can start making some actual progress, get this thing back to looking pretty good. So I've just marked a cut line. Now that goes from here to here. So we're basically just following this line up. So I might even just put a Nico across the top there just so we get it dead square. Bye bye to the front end, eh? Bloody snub nose in the old army trailer.
Right, this is it, the Snub Nose Army Trailer. We are finally getting there. The front quarter is now gone, but I think this is actually turning out pretty sick. I think this looks actually a lot cooler already. Obviously, the next step is to get that welded onto the front of here. I'll probably just tack weld it today, but I do need to cut off the rest of these tabs, tidy up all the corners, and just run a flat wheel right around the whole thing, so get it ready for a couple of tacks. But yeah, I think this is gonna be sick. Just going around and cleaned up all the edges ready for just a little bit of welding. What I'll do now is just pop this up onto there. I'll use some square magnets from the back, try and get it lined up as best as possible, take some measurements, and then I'll tack it in. We have one stub nose little trailer. I think that actually turned out really good. It sort of maintained the army look of it. Glad I decided to use that front cut. I was originally planning to um, like sort of brace it and then just sheet it with some flat sheets so I could sit the toolbox closer, but I think that sort of maintains its classic nature of being an army trailer. I literally just checked the temperature. It's 37 degrees and it's probably like 45 in the shop. So I'm not feeling very good because grinding, welding, and cutting, and all that sort of stuff in 37 degree heat inside a tin shed. Yeah, it sucks. I do want to get the mud guards on, which means that I do have to actually clean up this rust first, so I'll just get the wire wheel out, give that a little blitz, and I'll probably measure across this distance and find the center point, put a little mark there, and then I'll center point on my mud guards, and I'll just stitch weld it just along here for now. Then what I'll do is probably bring out some box section, and tie it into the bottom of the guard just to give it some rigidity. Yeah, this thing's looking sick. And then I want to get the uh, toolbox just sitting there on the front just to see what it will look like. I freaking hate that. It looks ugly as hell. Oh, I don't know. I hate it. I absolutely hate that. Dead square, so there's no poke whatsoever. I feel like it just needs a bit of poke. I do know it'll look weird now because I am actually gonna plate in these corners here and I am actually gonna do some sort of um, bar across the back and a bar across the front, like tie in one to here. So I know it will look weird now. I just wonder if that fender needs to tuck up under that arch and be welded along the top. I think I might just quickly try that because what's the harm in trying now, I guess. So I am gonna try that. I'm just gonna tuck the fender in. We're gonna give it a little bit of poke and just see what it looks like. Three attempts later and I think I'm pretty happy with that. I got not much poke at all, just a tiny, tiny little bit. We'll get away with that. So I am very, very pleased that I changed that because it was just looking a bit funky before. I am going to just get a measurement cut right along there so I can have maximum ground clearance. I'm going to do that on both sides equal with the trail. I also did have my new digital protractor thing so I did sit that on there and it's within 0.2 degree to fold but I can obviously play around a little bit with that once I do some bracing. So I want to play around. The reason I want to play around with this a little bit more is because I don't want to do the other side until I'm very happy with this side, just in case I want to change it. So I'll quickly, I'll quickly measure and cut these ends and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I'll admit that doesn't look great. I reckon that once we get some bits to tie it in here and at the front, I think it'll really come to life. I wrote my measurements down on how much I took off on each side. So I will just transfer that to the other side and cut them before I actually put it on. Once the other side's done, I can actually then put the box on the front as well. And we can see sort of what it's gonna look like. Right, both mud guards are done. I must say, they are definitely growing on me. For tonight, there's only one more piece of the puzzle left and that's just to sit the toolbox on just so we can get a look. Obviously, it won't be staying on because I still gotta fully weld everything. I don't know if I said it earlier, but I will be plating these little corners here so you can't see into there. 
and also making little bash plates sort of thing. I'm absolutely buggered. This day has destroyed me, but I really want to get this toolbox on, so I'm going to take it out of its wrapper, stick it on the front, and we can see what it looks like. So we managed to get the box on. Now it does look a little bit weird at the moment, I'll admit that, and I keep saying it, but once it's all tied in, I think it'll look really good. And once the whole trailer is black as well, I think it'll look great. So this toolbox is only about four or five hundred dollars, I can't really remember, but it seems to be pretty good quality and it's already powder coated black, so that's a good thing. Now it has a door on each side, which is perfect for what we want, and it also has a large door on the top. So I'm hoping I might be able to buy a fridge that'll actually fit in here. If not, my fridge can go in the back and this will just be for camp chairs and all that sort of stuff. All in all, I think pretty good progress today. I'm very happy with how it looks. Uh, I am gonna measure this pretty soon and um, I will get the box made for the top of here. It will be 150 higher, so it probably will go up to about there, just to allow a little bit more storage in the back. It's an absolute rig for ground clearance and coal is going to take this thing places where trailers should not go so i'm very keen for that so now i just got to start thinking about how i'm going to tie all this together i might bring a bar out and across and down might not do anything at all but i think a bar across here would be quite nice i just don't want the door resting on it so yeah that's going to be it for today guys if you have any suggestions put them down in the comments i'd love to hear them because i'm i'm constantly looking for stuff to do this thing so i'd love to hear it but thanks for watching i'll catch you guys on the next episode see you later